So yesterday we have uh, discussed the purchasing power parity theory. We know purchasing power means the two currencies of uh, 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 two currencies are in equilibrium, uh, known as the currencies are being at par. When a basket of goods is priced the same in both countries, taking into account with the exchange rate. So we uh, we have discussed the par value of uh, currencies, bond. Uh, uh, etc. Uh, so we have uh, explained uh, the calculating purchasing power parity uh, and the relative version of purchasing power parity is calculated uh, through a formula. The formula is S is equal to P1 divided by P2. So S is equal to exchange rate of currency 1 to currency 2. P1 is the cost of goods x in currency 1 and p2 is the cost of goods x in currency 2. Then uh, we uh, explained uh, comparing the nation's purchasing power parity. So we can compare uh, cross country analysis. We can do a cross country analysis. So we can compare the uh, two countries of uh, their purchasing power and uh, understand the price differences of goods uh, due to the purchasing power disparities. So, uh, so we can uh, we have discussed the real GDP, nominal GDP, and the GDP differences due to purchasing power, and we have uh, discussed the the GDP if uh, means purchasing power effect of GDP uh, between countries. Uh, so this graph uh, shows the uh, the GDP differences due to the purchasing power parity uh, disparity effect. So it was uh, uh, seen that uh, China was uh, affected more because of uh, we know that China is a manufacturing oriented country and uh, they, their manufacturing cost is manufacturing cost and labor cost are much lower so that they have benefited more because of the uh, purchasing power their, their purchasing power parity GDP uh, GDP by purchasing power parity is much more than the nominal GDP and you can also see that. Uh, the uh, I mean uh, the the countries like especially developed countries like uh, U.S., uh, Japan, Germany, and their uh, purchasing power parity differences in GDP is very very minor effect. And as far as India is concerned, uh, India's uh, GDP by purchasing power uh, have uh, a disparity uh, over the nominal GDP. So this was explained in the last class. So next, uh, now we can go for the uh, detailed explanation of uh, purchasing power and its drawback. So relative purchasing power parity, uh, purchasing power parity is different type. Uh, the, the one is uh, relative purchasing power parity. So it is purchase, relative purchasing power parity is an economic theory that states that exchange rates and inflation rates uh, in two countries should be equal out ever time. So relative purchasing power parity theory states that the exchange rate and inflation rates uh, levels in two countries should be equal. But I don't know in practical it is been uh, possible. But the theory says that the exchange rate and inflation rates of two countries are to be same. Inflation means the effect due to the purchasing power. So exchange rates and inflation rates should be in equilibrium. Relative so purchasing power is an extension of absolute purchasing power in that it is a dynamic. Uh, it is dynamic means, you know, you know, the purchase, the inflation rates uh, varied uh, across the months, varied across the days uh, and exchange rate also varied across minutes, across seconds or across hours uh, between or among the currencies. So it is very dynamic. Uh, it is not static. While purchasing power is useful uh, in understanding macroeconomics in theory, in practice, relative purchasing power parity does not seem to be hold true over short term, uh, short term horizon. As uh, rightly said, that the relative purchasing power parity is theoretically possible, but in practical, it is very difficult to uh, be uh, possible. Uh, you know, uh, the inflation is really dynamic, and the exchange rate is dynamic. So uh, the, the exchange rate and uh, uh, inflation rates uh, between two countries uh, are to be same. It is never happened, uh, never happened. So it is impractical. But in theoretically, we can say that 
in the relative purchasing power parity is the equilibrium state of exchange rates as well as inflation rates uh, uh, among countries got it any doubts relative purchasing power parity Any doubts? No doubts? We can go to the next slide. Shall I? Okay, sir. So reasons, uh, according to the concept of relative purchasing power parity, that three point difference will drive a three point change in the exchange rate between the US and Mexico. So we can have an example between two countries that is US and X uh, Mexico, the reason behind the difference. So we can expect the Mexican peso to depreciate at the rate of three percentage per year. So Mexico, Mexico is a country, the currency is Mexican peso. And uh, as for the current inflation rate, the value of Mexican peso is depreciating 3 percentage per year. Or that the US dollar should appreciate at the rate of 3 percentage per year. So these are this is a reason for the uh, difference of uh, purchasing power parity or purchasing power pa disparity. The disparity was due to the inflation and exchange rate. So here the two countries, Mexican peso, you know, Mexico is not much a developed country like uh, uh, US. So Mexican peso, uh, their value is decreasing year by year. The decreasing year uh, per year is 3%. But you know, the US is a very well developed country and their uh, value, uh, their uh, uh, currency value is appreciating 3%. So the, the, the both current currency is moving in opposite direction so that uh, there is no point of uh, equalizing uh, the exchange rate and inflation rate of two countries so that we can say that the relating purchasing power parity is not possible. Got it? Because of the reasons is the changes in the exchange rate and change in the inflation rate. Here it is evidence that the Mexico is, is not a developed country. Their currency value is decreasing year by year. That means here the decreasing 3 percentage per year and US dollar, you know, it is a developed country so that the currency is increasing year by year. That means 3, 3 percentage increased. So there is a difference. Uh, two countries uh, currency is moving in opposite direction. One currency that is depreciating and the other currency that is appreciating the value. So uh, this theory may not be, this not may not be, must not be true uh, in real situations. Th this example uh, shows the evidence. Okay, got it? You can read the slide and uh, any confusion you can ask me. Sir, this is inflation because here, uh, uh, here the, it is uh, happened due to the exchange rate differences and inflation means depreciate the rate of 3 percentage means two factors uh, may influence the inflation as well as the exchange rate differences. Here the 3 percentage depreciation happened in the Mexico Mexican pesos value. Uh, the reasons are inflation and exchange rate differences and the three percentage increase in the uh, appreciate the value of us dollar uh, the reasons were inflation as well as exchange rate differences the two reasons are included here right so these two reasons are the main focus point which cause the purchasing power disparities got it okay sir because these factors are dynamic, you know. Every time it is changing. Static Allah. I don't know. So purchasing power means no arbitrage opportunity. Arbit arbitrage means uh, somebody making profit uh, out of the price differences uh, in the two markets. So here the currencies are in purchasing power, the commodities are in purchasing power. The people will not take the effect of arbitrage. That means the people have no scope of uh, doing business uh, in currencies, doing business in commodities. The people will be stuck at home. Okay. 
so they cannot make a, a profit out of that but uh, but you know this is only theoretical but in practice there are price differences in the market the price differences in the wholesale market retail market we can purchase something from the wholesale market and we can sell it in the retail market so that the purchasing power is not happening there so that is purchasing power means no arbitrage opportunity but in theoretically we can say that purchasing power uh, or no arbitrage opportunities there but in practical it is not possible according to purchasing power parity a pencil in canada should be the same price as a pencil in the united states after taking into account the exchange rate and excluding transaction and shipping cost okay so a pencil in canada should be uh, the same price as the pencil in united states but you know uh, it is never happened so in other words there should be no arbitrage opportunity for someone to buy an expensive pencil in one country and sell them in another for a profit so you imagine that situation that the pencils are uh, costing the same price in the us as well as in canada but you know it is in practically it is very uh, i mean the prices are different and one can purchase from some pencil from us and sell it in canada but here uh, the theory says that uh, here the two countries uh, pencil cost are remains the same okay any doubts but we can uh, why this differences happen because of this transaction and shipping cost there are some cost associated with uh, maybe inflation may be the factor maybe exchange rate changes may be the factors maybe the government policies may be the factors of these uh, differences in the purchasing power between countries uh, so that factors are the limitations of purchasing power parity theory we can look all these limitations in the later slides Hope you have insights from this slide. Okay, can I move move forward to the next slide? Yes, sir. So example of relative purchasing power parity, suppose that uh, over the next year's inflation causes average prices for the goods in the US to increase by 3%. Uh, in the same period, prices for the product in Mexico increased by 6%. So, you know, the inflation of two countries are uh, stating here. US, the inflation has been increased by 3% and in Mexico, it has been increased to 6%. We can say that the Mexico has had higher inflation than the US since the prices there have risen faster by three points. Okay, so this may be the reason, it's not, this is an, a reason for the differences in the purchasing by parity theories between two countries. Maybe inflation may be the real uh, most important construct or variable uh, that uh, lead uh, for the I mean, differences in the purchasing power parity. So inflation may be due to the same, same many factors like uh, uh, government policies, uh, like people behavior. Okay, there are many factors associated, associated uh, by causing inflation. But we cannot control these two countries are following two different rules and two different governments and two different factors. So the inflation in one country may be different from the inflation in another country. Inflation in India may be totally different from inflation in the US. So the inflation kills this purchasing power parity. Okay, so inflation is the main reason for the difference, purchasing power parity difference. Got it? Yes, sir. Okay. If we can skip this slide, it's not very good. So we can look uh, some important thing that is Big Mac index. So there was a study since 1986. The economist has playfully tracked the price of McDonald's corporations, Big Mac hamburger across many countries. So there was a journal. There was a paper which is published in a journal. The journal is nine.
paper was written in the year of 2003 uh, and the paper the authors have constructed an index the index is known as big mac index so this big mac index uh, was prepared after conducting a studies on the mcdonald's corporation's burger the burger price across many countries so you know we have kfc Factors, uh, the factors uh, which uh, factors uh, which lead the purchasing power disparities, or uh, they have quoted that they have cited that the purchasing power parity is not practical in any way. So they have proved with the, with the help of uh, constructing an index name Big Mac index. This Big Mac index was constructed by comparing the price of uh, Big Mac hamburger. Big Mac uh, is the McDonald's Corporation's burger manufacturing unit. So they have constructed an index and the index was named as Big Mac Index. So you understand, hope you understand this slide. And they have proved that the purchasing power parity theory is not a good reflection of reality. Got it? Sir. Yes. Any doubts? So I will explain in detail uh, about the Big Mac index. Big Mac index. This is a famous uh, work of uh, this uh, Michelle R. Packer and Patricia S. Pollard. Big Mac index. If you search in the Google, you can find the paper. It's the, the paper about the purchasing power parity theory, and they were stated that the purchasing power parity is a foolish theory. Never happened. You can also uh, conduct similar studies and uh, prove that this theory was wrong by comparing the prices of commodities. Cross country analysis can be done. So Ajimsha uh, pointed out that there is a price difference in the Toyota cars. So the price differences in the Toyota car across countries may be due to some factors. The factors we have to identify that maybe the GST or maybe some other government uh, taxation rate. Many factors have influenced because of many in some countries, you know, uh, Toyota car is most demanded in India because some people have preferred this brand due to the quality of the brand. So the people are trying, people are, have a willingness to purchase the Toyota brand even if the prices are high so you know the people uh, uh, in countries they 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 are willing to purchase uh, apple phones even though the price prices of the apple phones are high so this uh, this may lead for the inflation okay so uh, can i move forward to the next slide Yes, sir. So what about the Big Mac PPP? Big Mac PPC, PPP is an informal index. So it is an informal index used to compare the purchasing power between currencies as compared to the price of McDonald's Big Mac. So Mac, McDonald's Big Mac is the name of a burger, the brand name of a burger, and they have used the price difference of uh, the burger prices across countries. Another name for the Big Mac PPV is a Big Mac index. 
the, the two uh, concepts or two terms we are using uh, either it is big mac ppp or the big mac index so currencies are compared against the local price of big mac in the nation's currencies so depending on the ratio the currency could be considered over and under value so after this study they their findings uh, tell us the findings tell us uh, some of the country's currencies are overvalued means depends on the prices of these big mac differences for example if they compare the indian big mac prices and the american big mac prices if india's big mac prices are slightly inflated as compared to the america the findings may be the currency is undervalued or overvalued because the price differences they can find that the currency is undervalued or overvalued okay so after reading the paper we can understand that some kind of countries the currency is overvalued and the effect may be lead to the price changes some countries the currencies are undervalued overvalued means it's like uh, overpriced the currencies are overpriced undervalued means it's under underpriced because there is a scope for improvement but it is still underpriced okay any doubts so sir this is a criticism of purchasing power parity theory right oh, of course this is a criticism of purchasing power this big mac theory is a strong opponent of of purchasing power parity theory and they have proved that this theory was wrong and they have used the uh, the matrix uh, called big mac index big mac index and they have proved it based on the data sets in the big mac index and big mac index was constructed by comparing the prices of uh, uh, this uh, mcdonald's burger price okay shall i move forward yes sir so now uh, we can look on the drawbacks of purchasing power parity the reasons behind the price changes so drawback of purchasing power parity may be the transport cost the first one is transport cost so you know the transport costs are different in different countries goods that are unavailable locally must be imported resulting in transport cost so transport cost is a one of the main uh, component that causes the inflation as well as the price differences you know the transportation cost is different in different places even india itself it is different in different prices tamil nadu transportation cost is different from kerala transportation cost and it is different from as compared to maharashtra so these costs include not only fuel but in fuel itself it is different in different prices different places in india and also import duties also included in this uh, transportation cost so imported goods will consequently sell at a relatively higher price than do identical locally sourced goods you know the toyota cars in, in dubai it is very cheap as compared to india the toyota cars in us and japan it is cheap as compared to india so why india's toyota cars are priced high maybe due to the transportation cost or import duties as well sometimes the toyota in india they have used some patent rights of uh, uh in japan they the entire time india should uh, give every year some patent charges to the uh, toyota I, I may i know the country uh, home country of toyota japan or uh, japan right toyota is a japanese car right can you unmute and say yes okay okay fine so uh, uh, what i'm trying is uh, this is due to the uh, what i say this is due to the transportation cost difference so transportation cost differences is one factor and as well as import duties uh, being discussed uh, in this slide so tax differences of course the government says taxes such as the value added tax uh, can spike prices in one country relative to another so value added tax is another uh, reason so uh, tax differences value added tax uh, is another reason for the 
uh, changes, uh, tax changes. And the government intervention tariffs can dramatically argument the price of imported goods where the same products in another country will be comparatively cheaper. So the government intervention, sometimes the central government and state governments, they, they try to reduce the import duty. Sometimes that if the government intervention is positively influenced, the prices are being reduced. But sometimes the government charge more import duties and the prices are increased. So this may be another reason, government intervention. So non-traded services, uh, see the example of Big Mac again, Big Mac price factors input costs that are not traded. So these factors include such items such as insurance, utility costs and labor cost. Therefore, those expenses are unlikely to be parity internationally. So you, you, you know, the, the, the labor cost in different countries are different. Indian labor, labor costs are different from the Chinese labor cost. So Chinese labor costs are much lower so that all the countries have transferred their manufacturing to Chinese workers so that its labor cost is much, much lower. And also insurance cost is also redu reduced, uh, I mean, different in different countries. Utility costs are different in different countries. So it cannot be in parity uh, uh, practically. So market competition. Another the factors which cause uh, difference prices is the market competition. Uh, goods might be deliberately priced higher in a country. In some cases, higher prices are because of company may have good competitive advantage over other sellers. The company have a monopoly or be part of a cartel of companies that manipulate prices, keeping them artificially high. So market competition, you know, some of the companies have cartel. Cartel means a group of companies, they can manipulate the prices. Some of the companies are price makers and some of the companies are price takers. So price maker means a, a company uh, who is a leader company that determine the price and other company follow the price of that company. That is a price maker do that. And other companies called price takers. Okay. So here the uh, price makers, some of the companies are monopoly and they do fix the price they have the market size that much so that they can have the right to fix the prices and other manufacturers uh, will be uh, following the prices of uh, these price takers so the competitive advantage is another factor so if the uh, if the company uh, if some other companies you know uh, some uh, price followers they have to they, they are compelled to take the price of the price leader even though they are not satisfied with the price. So, so the, there is a price differences may emerge. Okay, this is another reason that this market competition. Okay, any doubts? Any doubts? No, sir. Okay. So, uh, I hope you understand the things. Uh, this is about the purchasing power parity and drawbacks. This is very important in examination point of view. Purchasing power parity theory and the drawbacks and the Big Mac index. Uh, the reasons uh, behind uh, the uh, I mean, purchasing power disparities. So, the reason behind the purchasing power parity is not true. It is not practical as well. So any doubts you can ask me.